from Rochester, New York originally. Um, my dad's from Jamaica, my mom's from here, and uh, I grew up just in a soccer background with my dad. Um, I played for the local club, Empire, and I was playing from, from day one. Um, I made the move out to Florida when I was 16 um, for the residency program um, in IMG. Uh, I spent some time there before I headed to Real Salt Lakes Academy in uh, Casa Grande, Arizona, um, where I lived for two years. From there I went to the University of Virginia for a semester and um, eventually made that transition to MLS with Real Salt Lakes first team. When you were a kid, did you dream of being a pro? Yeah, um, that was the only thing that was on my mind. Um, and I would always look around to the young guys that were doing well um, in Europe and say, that they were 18, they were 19, kids were breaking through, so that was always my goal, was to sign um, a professional contract as early as possible and start my career. Um, luckily enough, I was able to do that through RSL. Um, I signed when I was, I think I was 18. Mm -hmm. um, that, was a big, that was a big accomplishment for me um, itself. Um, and I'm blessed to kind of be living the life that I'm living right now. So growing up as a kid, did you train outside of your club. I think a lot in American culture and even in European cultures, kids go and they train with their club and they think, okay, my three hours I trained with my club was, you know, to kind of check it off your list, like I did soccer practice, Yeah, no, I trained. Um, I was lucky enough to have my dad coach you in the, in the club, so um, some days I would train twice with my team and with his team. Um, and I think the biggest thing I did was uh, me and a group of my friends and we were uh, must have been from age 9 to 11 or 12. Mm -hmm. um, we did individual training with a local guy here um, twice a week. Um, so that was on top of all the extra training I was doing. And that was, the individual stuff is big time because that's when you really get more touches um, as opposed to training with a group of 20 guys. How many hours a week would you say you trained growing up as a kid, including with your club and just individual? Um, at least for two hours a day, three times a week, and then an hour. Um, by myself or individual training other two three times mm -hmm. um, I would try to at least touch the ball six out of seven days out of the week I was really into Ronaldinho as a kid and there was a quote out there I remember hearing Same. where um, he was talking he said something about a thousand touches a day um, so that was always something I harped on was just making sure whether it was juggling dribbling um, to just get a thousand touches a day and I felt if I did that then that would at least put me in the right path I'm always trying to work as much as possible about myself, um, so I think that's really the best way to get better, which is to put the extra work in when nobody else is. Training as much as I do just gives me that, um, no matter how I'm feeling, I know no matter what, I have my preparation that I put in. Uh, maybe I'm um, not feeling 100% on the day, um, maybe for some reason I'm lacking a little bit of motivation or whatever it is. Um, just knowing that I've put the work in um, allows me to feel good in the ability that I have. For me. Half of the reason I train so much is just so that I know that I'm going to feel good and I have that belief in myself that I can get on the ball and kind of make that difference that um, is expected of me from my team. Describe your mentality, um, I'd say even as a kid, like what was your mentality in games, training, and then even now as a pro, what's your mentality? Yeah, I've always been someone that was just really focused um, on what I wanted to do. Um, I know who I am and I know that um, I put a lot into this game. so. Uh, my mentality is that uh, I'm just going to put in as much as as much work in as possible, mm -hmm. um, and if I put that work in, then I'm going to be successful. Um, it might there might be a couple setbacks, um, things might not always go my way, but um, I truly believe if I work and put everything into it, then I'll get the results I want. Um, so that just kind of sets the base uh, foundation for who I am. Is there a decision that you remember making um, that made an impact on where you are now and the level you play at? Like a like basically a cross point in your life. Yeah, um, I think it was my my freshman year of high school where I started looking at um, places I could go live um, full time residential. Um, I ended up at residency uh, with the U17s, um, but um, leading up to that time period, I had already emailed the academy um, coaches at RSL saying that I was interested in coming there. Um, they came and watched me with Empire actually at a showcase, and I was all set to go there. Um, if I didn't go to Florida with the uh, U-17s. Mm -hmm. um, just that decision to move and really dedicate my life to uh, pursuing the um, pursuing my dream of becoming a professional soccer player was, it was that pivotal moment, I think. Um, if I didn't move away, I don't know um, where I'd be. I might not be um, living the life I am. Uh, maybe I didn't, wouldn't have gotten uh, my 
scholarship offers and for college and university. Um, so everything could have been different. Mm -hmm. um, but that, the willingness um, on my end and my parents' end to um, really give everything I have and make the sacrifice of moving away, um, I really think um, paved the way for me. This is actually from one of our viewers and one of the kids in the club. Okay. They said, what do you eat before a match? What do I eat before a match? I usually, it'll be three and a half hours before, I'll have brown rice, uh, salmon, vegetables, and I'll have half of a banana, and then 45 minutes later, I'll have the other half of a banana. That's my pregame. That's very set. detailed. Yeah, that's so good. Good question. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think kids want to hear about the, the salmon and rice, though. No, <laughs> no, they don't. Another question from his brother, actually. Um, who is your all-time favorite player? And I want to take a guess at this okay. because you're an Arsenal fan. Yeah. I'm going to go with Thierry Henry. Yeah, absolutely. I still have on my computer, I have downloaded all of his goals, all 227 uh, Arsenal nice. goals, 28 maybe. I actually got to see him play um, at New York Red Bull. Oh, really? Yeah. I was I was hurt when we played against him, and it was his last year. He was playing at MLS. So oh, was imagine if you could have played him. I know. He scored a banger, or not a banger, but just a classic Terry on finish inside the foot. And just like watching it in person, I was, <laughs> I was like, like, ah, it sucks, but that was... <laughs> That was a dream come true to see that in person, so. That's amazing. Last question. What's the best advice you can give to a young player if they want to have a future in the game, be it D2, D1, or even going pro? Yeah, I just think the biggest thing, um, and I try telling kids all the time, is that you just have to make soccer your life. Um, you have to go home and watch games and really analyze them and see, maybe focus in on a player, see what they're doing, and just try to be a student of the game. Um, and from there, you got to go out and play and practice by yourself. Um, it has to be something that you fully commit to, um, and it's got to always be on your mind. It's really easy, especially as a kid, to kind of get distracted by things. And that's fine. Um, we're all we're all human beings, right. and we all want to enjoy ourselves. But um, you know, you always have to toe the line between having too much fun and staying on track, and um, really just deciding that soccer is going to be um, who you are as a person, um, and that decision. Uh, I think is the biggest thing you, you can do is just to decide that you're going to make soccer your life. And um, like I was talking about earlier, um, putting the preparation in to know that you're going to be successful. Um, putting so much work in that you know it's almost impossible for you to fail no matter how long it takes um, to be successful. So that's the biggest thing is just really dedicating yourself to it and um, embracing the lifestyle even though it's not always the easiest thing to do. Really well said. <laughs> guys hope you enjoyed that interview with jordan allen massive thanks to jordan allen for being willing to uh sit down and talk to us about uh, his journey to get to the mls and to share that information with you guys super cool guys super down to earth if you like this video make sure that you give it a big thumbs up also if you want to see more videos like this don't forget to hit that subscribe button We've got a lot of stuff coming up in the new year that we're really excited to uh share with you guys remember your dreams won't work unless you do this is andrew from boost football over and out